Hello everyone, my name is Mist, and on Maple, I belong to a certain category of players that isn't really all that focused on progression in terms of damage and getting levels and whatnot. Instead, I'm about aesthetics and making my character look good in every possible way. Doing this isn't as hard as working on your gear and doing big numbers, but it definitely takes work and a good bit of knowledge to put together a very good look. Of course, I have to mention that at the end of the day, it's down to personal preference when it comes to what you want your character to look like, so you might find some sections in this video to be unsuitable for you, which is why I've timestamped every section so you can jump around and easily find what you need. I've also marked sections that are reboot friendly, so you guys don't feel left out. This video is by far my biggest project on this channel, which is why it took me a bit longer than usual to upload. If you enjoy it, consider subscribing for more content like this in the future. And thank you so much for 600 subscribers. Without further ado, this is my guide to fashion story. As I have mentioned earlier, not everyone can fully benefit from this guide. Most of it assumes some requirements are met. First, you cannot do fashion story if you're not playing the game. More specifically, if you do not have a decent spending budget, I recommend a weekly minimum of 300 mil, which is good enough to get you a decent start on this journey. Reboot players will struggle with fashion no matter what. Without access to trading and meso markets, the only options are to either spend real money, play reg servers on the side, or simply stick to free event outfits if you think it's too hard. And finally, you have to be in the mindset of wanting to improve your fashion game. If you're happy with what you have, good for you. Of course, we have to touch on some basic information, starting with defining fashion story. The obvious answer is styling your character's hair, face, and getting good looking an X, but I'd like to take it a step further. Here, I will differentiate between two levels of fashion. On one side, we have basic fashion, which includes outfits, hairs, faces, and skin color. On the other side, we have what I'd like to call extended fashion, which is a lot more expansive. There we have, and get ready for this, chairs, mounts, androids, damage skins, IGNs, medals, titles, pets, fame, farm images and names, and finally, housing. All of these elements play an important role in enhancing your character's aesthetics, and while it may seem a bit much, extended fashion is really not that much harder to incorporate. Getting into basic fashion and some aspects of the extended version requires knowing what you can get and when you can get it. It is very easy to anticipate upcoming cash shop sales since rotations follow a fixed schedule every Wednesday. Gachapons and premium surprise style boxes last for a month, after which they are updated. And royal styles typically last for around 2-3 to three weeks. You can check the durations of these rotations when they happen in the cash shop update posts. Oh, and there's also the choice coupon, which allows you to select the hairs and faces you want. It's largely unpredictable, but updates twice a year or so. This, of course, is not all the cash shop has to offer, because other themed sales are also run throughout the year to accompany certain real-life holidays and celebrations. Some of these include Christmas, Valentine's, St. Patrick's, and April Fool's, which we've had recently. Other miscellaneous sales center around Black Friday, Maple Story's anniversary, and major game updates. Not to mention seasonal style boxes that come around during summer and fall as an example. Anticipating these updates is very easy. Simply googling any of these boxes, or really any item of your choosing, will display their previous sales. You can then compare and contrast them to somewhat accurately predict which items you can expect in future sales. Cash up updates are not put together on a weekly basis, but are scheduled ahead of time for every patch. MapleStory data miners are able to observe these scheduled updates, and one notable example you can check after every patch is the Skytheon on Twitter, who posts very reliable leaks for GMS and other regions. I will link his page in the description. Philosopher books and Marvel Machine rotations are somewhat predictable, as each of these sales happens twice a year. Philosopher books return around the first patch of major summer and winter updates, and Marvel Machine happens during filler updates around March and April, and later during the year around September and October. I have mentioned these two because they contain items of interest to fashion players, such as chairs, themed style boxes, including ones that are not featured regularly or are discontinued, as well as various skin coupons and androids. Even if you're not really spending directly to obtain Marvel items, you can observe the market to purchase items from players who do. Knowing the probability of the items you're trying to get is pretty important, 
Because for most sales, the odds are so slim that you could wind up losing all of your savings on many occasions and still not get anything good. Have a very close look at the probability page on the website before you decide to spend, because some sales are just straight up unfair. While all items in the regular surprise style box are 2% each, in other boxes, you will find that they are so stuffed with so many crappy items that it goes down to just 1%, meaning boxes like Black Fridays, Anniversary, and Valentine's contain 100 items each, which is honestly really stupid. Reg server players have the privilege of only purchasing the items they want through trading, but for you reboot players, caution must be advised, because you could wind up spending hundreds of dollars and still not get the items you want. This is for style boxes. As for special royal hairs and faces, it's even worse, because the odds are not even across the board. For coupons like Black Friday, Christmas, and Gender Swap, rates range between 20% and 5%. Be very careful before spending on these. Say you actually did open these boxes and got plenty of crap from them. MapleStory gives you the option to exchange these items for stamps, which can then be used to buy items in the stamp shop located at the free market entrance. The stamp shop updates twice a year and offers plenty of cool items that do not require RNG. Rex server players can use the market to purchase worthless items in bulk, but reboot players have no choice but to open boxes to make use of this feature. To sum things up, start by familiarizing yourself with things that are accessible to you, learn to look ahead, and determine whether you have the funds necessary to get them. To style a character, it's necessary to keep in mind that you can't just slap together any set of items you have and call it a day. Naturally, there needs to be a certain level of coherence and harmony between every individual piece. Achieving this is both simple and time-consuming because you have to expand your inventory sufficiently so that you have a wide variety of combinations to work with. Start by learning what your world's market has to offer, and what you can realistically purchase with your budget. It's mostly pointless to focus entirely on items you can't afford or ones that are simply not available due to being very old or any other reason. In time, you'll be able to acquire these items since they almost always turn up at some point, but for now, don't worry too much about that. At first, it's a very good strategy to buy just about anything you think is good, since your inventory is limited, and even if you can't work with these items yet, eventually, your inventory will grow to a certain point that you'll be able to mix and match freely, and buy new items with the purpose of making them work with older ones. For Reboot, hoarding is the main strategy. Anything you can get should be obtained. This means taking advantage of all events that award cosmetics, in addition to everything else you can get from style boxes and whatnot, the stamp shop must be avoided initially, because you can't afford to throw away items unless you either have too many dupes of, or if you're certain they're absolutely terrible. In terms of royals, the same applies where you only need to save the styles you like. Remember that the cap on how many hairs and phases you can store is 100 for each, and you're not going to immediately get these because most of your slots are locked. You don't have to spend an X on these, since the ones you get from the reward points shop are more than enough. Now comes the matter of what you can get, or rather, what you can try to get. As you know, there are thousands of cosmetics in this game, a lot of which are in high demand. You may be thinking of trying to get items like Blood Oath Weapon and Doll's Nightwear, but you need to remember that not everything is obtainable in 2023. Realistically, you will never be able to obtain a large number of these items, Previously sold master labels haven't had any returns since around 2019, and items like Doll's Nightwear haven't been seen in regular style boxes in ages. The only ones you can get are from the Black Mage style box, which is only featured in Marvel Machine, and even on the off chance that you do get one of these boxes, the rate on Doll's Nightwear, like everything else in the box, is a whopping 1%, and this is only one example of many items which are generally extremely difficult if not impossible to get nowadays. Another prominent example of items and styles that are impossible to get after their runs have expired are collaboration items, and this is for an entirely different reason. For these events, Nexon licenses recreations of these crossover characters, as seen with Isekai Quartet and Evangelion before it, for the entire duration of the event, during which they can legally sell items based around them. Once their contracts expire, Nexon can no longer legally sell the items, unless they renew or strike up new contracts with these crossover IPs. 
This is why we will never see collabs like Attack on Titan, Card Capture Sakura, and ReZero again. The same applies to the BTS and Blackpink events. This highlights how important it is to know what you can get before reaching points of desperation. If the items you want are unobtainable, just move on and go for something else. If you're unsure which items are generally out of reach, ask around the Maple community or join my Discord server, where we have a dedicated fashion channel with many experts in the field to answer all of your questions. Now, say you have acquired a good number of items and are ready to start putting together some banger looks. You need to remember that you can't just haphazardly put anything on and expect it to look good. This section will outline some useful rules you can follow when putting together your next fit. I'd like to start with a rule I sort of invented myself, and that is the three color rule, which suggests that your look should not have more than three colors because that is both easier to work with and generally yields very good results. You want to use two main colors and one secondary color for your looks, and do not overlook the importance of keeping things simple and easy on the eyes. And it's not enough to stick to just three colors. Your look needs to make sense, in that some pieces, if not all of them, should have a reason to be there. Otherwise, you end up like this. So why did I choose this hair? It goes well with the eyes, but what about the hat and overall? What's that bluish pixel right there? There's a yellow decoration on the overall, but nowhere else. These are some questions that should come to mind when you're experimenting. Attention to detail is very important because you might miss a few things that ultimately reduce the quality of your fit. If you're trying to use two shades of a color while still adhering to the three color rule, make sure they either blend very well or incorporate them into a mosaic of sorts, adding a few other shades that come together to make up a blank canvas that you can then accentuate later on with a weapon or an effect. This is an example of that. If you know what you're doing, then you're allowed to break the three color rule in favor of a more polychromatic approach. Good job, nobody. And finally, when it comes to hairs and faces, they can either make or break your look, which is why you need to choose your styles carefully, based on your preferences and how those styles fit your items. Unfortunately, in many cases, you have no choice but to play a long waiting game, because rotations tend to be not that good. You will eventually find the right style, and when you do, make sure it is perfect for what you're trying to achieve. But before that, make sure you can afford it like pretty much everything else you want. Alright, check this out. So, I have this almost liberated Genesis weapon. I know, I know. Hold your applause, hold your applause. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so how good I am at this game isn't really the point I'm trying to make here. Watch what happens to the effect when I use this cape. Pretty cool, right? And this is only one example of many combinations you can use for your outfits. Another example is when I take Prism Wings and pair them with Return of Angel, which is an effect, I get one and a half pairs of wings on my character. If I use a Rose Butter Wand, a weapon that gives this hovering butterfly over your character with the cape Petal Falls, it looks like the rain effect is emanating from the butterfly itself. There are countless combinations that work like this, and as you accumulate more items, it's going to get easier to spot them. Mixing and matching is essential to this, so don't stick to just wearing a single set, because that doesn't really encourage creativity. Moving on to something else, mixed dyes, an essential part of royal styling in my opinion, and it's because it allows you to have a decent level of freedom over which colors you want to use, which can then be used to make your styles even more compatible with your items. Random mixed dye coupons are not a personal favorite of mine, but luckily there is a variant that allows you to create your own combination, which is actually really good and not only for a single hairstyle. When you save a mixed dye, you are given a bonus option when you use your next royal coupon. Instead of that new style having any regular color, it will inherit that mixed dye you had on your previous style. You can even see what that looks like before you use any coupons simply by switching to a mixed dye then going into the cash shop, where you can then preview the hairstyles currently in rotation using that mix. The very same applies to faces too. Mixed dye coupons can be obtained from Marvel Machine, cash shop sales, and events. Here's a list of mixed colors that I currently have saved for both hairs and faces, which also happen to be my personal favorites. Check to see which ones work best for you, and to help you with that even further, I've linked the website in the description that allows you to preview every possible mixed dye combination for almost every hairstyle and face. Speaking of royals, if there's a new rotation but you already have one of the styles featured in it, 
switch to that style before using your next coupon, because that helps prevent pulling it again, thereby increasing your odds to pull the rest of the styles. Remember how I said you can pair up certain NX items to create new effects? The very same applies for chairs and mounts. Here's an example of me using Rain Puddle Cape with Galaxy Echo, which creates this really interesting background. If you want to take better screenshots of your characters, I recommend the last jellyfish map in Celis, where, in this area, you can take advantage of the clean, dark background to see certain items and effects better, and even help you spot things you wouldn't normally see in brighter maps like Genesis and whatnot. A good screen capture software I personally recommend is ShareX, which is what I use to take crisp screenshots and GIFs of my characters. The frame freezing feature comes with both zooming and drawing, and I can't stress enough how helpful that is. If that's not enough, you can also use something like Paint.net to zoom in on your screenshots even more without any quality loss. You'll find everything in the description. And finally, a quick reminder that permanent transparent equips always come around during Black Friday sales on the very last day. But you don't have to buy everything, especially not the transparent cape, because you can take just about any effect cape and disable that, giving you free transparency on the side. This was the first in a long series of fashion-based videos I have planned for the channel, which include monthly style box reviews and ratings of your outfits. Next, I will be answering a series of your fashion questions from my Discord server, so be sure to join us and subscribe to not miss any uploads. Also, did I miss anything in this video? Leave your questions in the comments and I will answer them to the best of my abilities. Thanks for watching, and I will see you very soon.